What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to professionally manage Python projects and dependencies using poetry. So let us get right into it. All right, so poetry is an all in one tool for managing Python projects and dependencies. And in this video today, I want to show you briefly how to work with it and how we don't have to use multiple tools to do multiple things like managing dependencies, building a project, publishing a project, working with virtual environments, we can use poetry to do all of this with one tool. And we're going to start by installing it. And for this, we're going to open up the command line of our choice in my case, CMD, and we're going to type pip install poetry. And once this is installed, we're going to navigate to the directory that we want to be working in. So in my case, this is going to be the current directory. And here we're going to now create a new project using poetry. And this is done by typing poetry new and then a project name, for example, neural nine project. And this is going to create the structure that we need uh, for a package, basically. And here we have the neural nine project directory. Inside of the neural nine project directory, we have another package called neural nine project with an init file in it. And we also have a test uh, directory here with another init file for the tests, obviously. And we also have the configuration as a Toml file here. So we have um, some data like name, version, description, authors, but also dependencies and also the build system that is used. And now we can do a lot of different things with poetry. So for example, we can add dependencies easily. But before we do that, we can also specify that we want to use a virtual environment. Uh, because if I go now into the command line, I am in this project here, I can now go ahead and type, for example, pip freeze, to see what packages are installed. And you can see that it's going to print all the packages that I have in my basic Python installation. If I don't want to have that, I can also specify a virtual environment, or I can create a virtual environment by specifying a Python version. And for that, I can first type on Windows, where Python on Linux, you type, I think, which and then Python three, and you're going to see the path to the different Python installations. And the one that I want to use for this virtual environment is this Python 3.9 version. So I'm going to copy the path here. And I'm going to say, uh, poetry, env for environment use, and then I'm going to pass the path. And if I uh, press enter, now it's going to create a virtual environment. And you can also see where it is created. So it's going to give me that path, I can then copy that and I can uh, navigate to it, or to be precise, I can navigate to the scripts directory in it, and call the activate uh, executable or batch file, I'm not sure. And then you can see I'm working now with this virtual environment. And in here, I can say pip freeze. And you will be able to see that there are no dependencies here. And I can also type where pip and you can see that it's using this virtual environment pip. So this is how you activate virtual environment, how you create one and how you use one. And now what we can do is we can add dependencies easily by saying poetry, at and then just some modules. So for example, I might want to use pandas. And if I type poetry at pandas, it's going to install the dependencies here, it's going to install all the things that are needed for pandas like numpy also, for example, um, and once the installation is done, we're going to see a couple of things. First of all, we're going to see that when I type pip freeze, we can now see all these um, dependencies here. But we can also see that we have in the Tomo file here, the dependency pandas. And we can also see that we have a log file that is important for the installations here, we can see that all these packages are tracked here as well. Um, so we have numpy, for example, here, we have pandas here, uh, in the log file. So this is done automatically for us. Now, what's also nice is we can also specify certain de dependencies, only for development. So I can say, for example, poetry, at and then I can say uh, that I want to use my pie for uh, the typing, but I don't want to use it. Uh, or I don't want to force the user of the package to install it if they don't want to. So I can say here, dash capital D to say that this is a development dependency. And I can say my pie, uh, install my pie, and then it's going to add the dependency here. But it's going to only add it for uh, development purposes. So we're going to see that in the Tomo file that we have now here the development dependencies, my pie, and we have pandas, which is an overall dependency. 
So this is how you do that. And uh, what you can also do here is if you want to publish your package, let's say you have some code in here, you have some uh, some stuff that you have implemented, you want to publish this package on uh, PyPy, or I think it's PyPI, what is what, how is it pronounced? I'm not sure. Uh, basically, on the on the platform where you get your pip packages uh, from so that people can say pip install neural nine project. Uh, what you can do here is you can build the wheel file by saying poetry built, uh, or actually just poetry built. And this is going to then build the whole project as a wheel file. And you can see that we get this directory here dist. And you can see that we get this wheel file. And we also get uh, the compressed version here as a gz file, gzip file. Um, this is also what you can do here. And then you can either publish it manually, or you can do it directly with poetry. I'm not going to go through the exact process here. Um, I have a video on how to publish packages with pip, I might make one with poetry as well. Uh, but basically, you have to set up the authentication. And once you have this, you can say poetry publish to publish the package. In my case, now it's going to say that I'm not authenticated. So it's not going to be able to do that. But you could just use poetry publish once you have the configuration to publish the package uh, on the pip platform. And then you can also uh, show what packages you have once you have a couple of things installed, you might want to have an overview, what packages are installed, why are they installed, what packages are depending on each other by saying poetry show dash dash tree. And then you're going to see what you have here installed. So you can see my pie with all these dependencies here, pandas depending on numpy, and stuff like that. And then you have this Python date util, which is depending on six and so on. Um, and that's basically it. Now there are some more advanced uh, features here, probably as well, if you look into documentation, but this is already quite a, a powerful tool. And I discovered it actually because I worked with a package that I downloaded from GitHub. And I saw in a make file, we have these poetry commands where we just uh, build and add and run and stuff like that. It's very, very um, comfortable or convenient to have a tool which, uh, with which you can manage dependencies, and which you can use to just build and publish with basic commands like build and publish. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.